Okay, this is chapter 45 of As Good as Dead. 45. Pip's face in the near dark, underlit by the ghostly glow of her laptop, shadows like bruises under her, around her eyes. A voice in her ears, Jackie from the cafe, and her own in an interview recorded yesterday. Kara murmuring in the background. It went perfectly, Pip pushing her just the right amount to get her to say what she needed her to say, sentences dancing around each other and silences that were full of meaning. The way Jackie's voice hissed between her teeth as she spoke Max's name, the hairs rising up the back of Pip's neck. She listened to it again in the dead of night, an old pair of white earphones plugged into her laptop. Josh Josh must have stolen her black headphones again to play FIFA, but that was okay. He could take whatever he wanted from her. Just a week ago, she thought she'd never see him again, thought she'd become the ghost he tried not to think about. He could take whatever he wanted, and Pip would love him back twice as hard. She studied the spiking blue lines on her audio software, the erratic picture of her own voice, firm where it needed to be, quiet when it should, up and down mountains and valleys. She isolated a clip and copied it into a new file. Pip imagined Hawkins listening to these same words in a couple of days, imagined him snapping to attention, pushing out of his chair as this out of time Pip pulled the strings. The same Pip he'd find grinning in the security footage from McDonald's if he ever needed to look. Pip couldn't include Max's name. Hawkins would have to go find it himself, but she was showing him exactly where to look. Follow the trail, Hawkins. The path of least resistance was right here. He just had to follow it, as he had once followed it to Sal Singh. Pip was making it so easy for him. All he had to do was follow, step into the world she was creating just for him. Teaser for A-G-G-G-T-M Season 3, Who Killed Jason Bell? Jingle plays. Insert clip. Newscaster. Fairview. Dot, dot. Redacted. There we go. Fairview. Redacted. A man that has had more than its fair share of tragedy. Redacted. Confirmation today from local police that President Jason Bell, the father of Andy Bell, has been found dead. Redacted. Police are treating his death as suspicious. End clip. Insert sound file of police siren. Pip. Hi, my name is Pip Fitzamobi, and I live in a small town. Over six years ago, two teenagers were killed in this small town. A few months ago, a man was shot dead in this small town. There's that saying, isn't there, that things always come in threes, even murder. One small town, and this week we learned that someone else is dead. Insert clip. Detective Hawkins. Jason Bell. Redacted. A resident of Fairview was found dead early Sunday morning. End clip. Jason Bell, the father of Andy and Becca Bell, was found dead at his place of work in a nearby town last week. Insert clip. We are investigating Jason's death as a homicide. End clip. It wasn't an accident or a natural death. Someone killed him, but beyond that, very few details of the case are yet known. It appears the murder took place on the evening of August 15th, judging by information police have released when appealing for witnesses in the area. Jason was found in his place of work, a grounds maintenance and cleaning company he owned called Green Scene and Clean Scene Limited. That's it. We might not know much except one thing. There's a killer out there and someone needs to catch them. Join us for a new season as we attempt to piece together this case alongside the active police investigation. Someone killed him, so someone wanted him dead, and there must be a trail somewhere. Police talk in a small town, and there's been a lot of talk over the last week. The town is practically cracking open with whispered secrets and furtive glances. Most isn't worth listening to, but there is some that cannot be ignored. Insert clip. Hi, Jackie. Just to introduce you, you're the owner of an independent cafe in Fairview on Main Street. Yes, that's me. Can you tell me what happened? Well, Jason Bell was here a few weeks ago, standing in line to order his coffee. He came in quite a bit, and there was someone in line in front of him. It was beep. Jason shoved him back, spilled his coffee, told him to stay out of his way. A physical altercation, would you say? Yes, it was quite violent, quite angry, I'd say. Very clear that they disliked each other. And you said this was just two weeks before Jason was killed? Yes. Are you suggesting that Beep might be the one who killed him? No, I... No, of course not. It's just that I think there was already animosity between them. Bad blood? Yeah, because of what Beep did to Jason's daughter, Becca, even though he wasn't convinced. I'm sure that gave Jason plenty of reason to hate him. End clip. 
I don't know about you, but there's already one name on my persons of interest list. All of this and more coming up in episode one. Join us soon for season three of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, Who Killed Jason Bell? Insert clip. I promise I will find out what happened to Jason. Who killed him? End clip. So do I. Jingle plays.